Good morning. That was a long anticipated good morning. <laughs> so glad to see you this morning. Uh, just being here, I'm so glad to see the faces. For those of you who are watching online, so glad you could join us as well. Happy Father's Day. Uh, last night I got a chance to uh, kind of share. I was with my father-in-law last night and just uh, just loving on him, having him love on me was great. I got the time earlier that uh, yesterday morning to spend with my father in Bible study. Um, so it was just, I said, hey, Dad, I'm, I'm not much for presents, uh, but I love this time together. So can we call that Father's Day gift? And he said, yeah, that's good. <laughs> so this morning, we're actually here to honor our Heavenly Father, for it's Him. It's He alone that showed us the love, showed us how to be a father, how to be one who cares, one who loves. And uh, so this morning, as we come to worship, let's go before our Heavenly Father and ask Him to be glorified in our worship. Holy, just, good Father, we come before you as your children. We come before you needing you, wanting you. Lord, I ask that you set aside everything else that we may look upon you and be amazed, knowing that we can count upon you for everything all our needs. Lord, let us desire nothing more than to glorify your name. For in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us this hope. And we worship this morning in that hope. In your Son's name. Count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now And in the way The same God who's never late Is working all things out Working all things out Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy in all my days. Yes, I will. Think of all the times you've been with me, there for you. Even when you didn't even know it. Count on one thing. Same God that never fails. Will not fail me now. You won't fail me now. With the way. The same God is never late. Is working on things out. You're working on things out. Yeah. Give 
give some praise this morning. And could I just challenge everybody that, um, especially with this song, is just being able to say yes to God. Understand that just even a mustard seed of what we can provide somebody else with what God has done for our life can just set a new tone, maybe now, maybe a year from now, but we don't know when that seed will blossom, but it will. Um, just give it to God. Your blood 
Father, we thank you. We thank you for your mercy and your love. This morning, I pray that you will speak through your truth and your word, that you will change our hearts, that we will be transformed and renewed in your love. By your grace.
Well, good morning. It is uh, so good to be with you here in person. It's so good to be with those of you who are watching online as well. Uh, thank you for being able to gather with us this morning here at New Hope or possibly in the uh, comfort of your home. But we are in this series on the Holy Spirit. And we've the last several weeks, uh, we've just been digging in and trying to figure out and discover and understand all that there is for us. I don't know that we can ever fully and completely understand the Spirit because the Spirit works in mysterious ways. But over these last few weeks, just to try to catch us up, we've been talking about like how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, I think m most believers, most followers of Jesus would say, man, I just, I want to be filled with the Spirit. Uh, I want the Spirit just to, to indwell in me in such a way that I am full of of the Spirit, but in order to do that, we need to do and be two things. We need to be open and we need to be empty. So if we're not open to allowing the Holy Spirit to fill us in the way that He wants to, to fill us, then, then He's not going to force us. And the other thing is, is that we fill our lives with, with things, so many things, and they're these like big rocks. So we had a jar and put these rocks in there and then we pour water in and the water can only go in certain places in the vessel because we've already filled the vessel with big rocks and things that represent things that we fill our lives with. And so we kind of force the spirit to the margins or the fringes of our lives instead of emptying ourselves of things in our lives and allowing the Spirit free reign in us. A couple weeks ago, we talked about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how the gifts are different. Like your gift mix is different than mine and different than, than theirs and yours is different than the person next to you. And that's good. That's a good thing. That's how God intended it. And that's how the Holy Spirit hands out and gives these generous, amazing gifts. They're different. We have differing gifts and a different mix but it all comes from the same spirit. We, we serve in differing ways, but we all serve the same Lord. And, and as we come together as the body of Christ, it's this amazing thing that you help in certain ways that I can't, and, and you help in certain ways than, than he can't, and you help in certain ways than she can't. And we all come together and we create this amazing, this amazing movement called the church. Paul uses this illustration. He connects it with the body and how all the differing parts of the body come together. And when the body's working at, at peak performance, there's amazing things that the, the human body can do. But if one part of the body is, isn't doing what they were designed to do, then the body isn't able to do all the things that it was intended to do. So it is in the church if we're not all living out and exercising the gifts and, and living through those gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us, then the church isn't as effective as what it needs to be or as what God desires it to be to reach more people, to grow more disciples, to, to expand the kingdom the way that God desires that it be done. And so last week we, we got into talking about the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts and the fruit, they are different so all of us, uh, we have differing gifts that come from the same Spirit, but when it comes to the fruit of the Spirit, all believers should possess all of the, the fruit. So uh, you, me, the people next to you, if, if you follow Jesus, then you should, you should have the virtues in your life that we find here in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. If you trust Jesus as your Savior, the Holy Spirit has come and taken residence in you, and then you then should exude love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These things should be in you. Now, just like if, if you garden or if you farm, you, you understand very well that it takes time for fruit to grow, right? I've got some tomato plants growing in the backyard, and it seems like they've not made much progress at all. Part of it is because I've not been doing a good job at watering them, not been doing a good job at keeping the weeds out, 
Maybe some of you can relate with that. Kind of like that in our spiritual lives, right? It takes time for those, that, that fruit to grow and mature. And we have to weed, we have to water, we have to fertilize, we have to care for and tend to so that that fruit can grow. And that's what we said last week, was that we've got this battle in our lives raging. We've got this sin, flesh, carnal nature in us that is trying to, to pull us away from godly living, trying to pull us away from being all that God has created us to be. But yet if we've trusted in Jesus, we've got the Holy Spirit in us who is, is, is calling us, is beckoning us, is drawing us to be more and more like Jesus Christ, to be more and more uh, sold out and focused on our Heavenly Father. And right in the middle between our flesh nature and between the Spirit calling us is our soul and we need to care and tend for our our soul just like we have to care and tend for fruit in the garden and then when we care for our soul then the holy spirit does this amazing work in the life of the believer and as this passage says in galatians 5 it is the holy spirit that produces this fruit in our lives as we spend time with God as we rest in him as we stay connected to the vine then the Holy Spirit produces these virtues in our lives and so this morning we begin to talk about each one of the fruits of the Spirit and so this morning we start with with love in 1984 some of, you, um, some of you will know this, and there are some in here, my guess is, will be like, I've never heard that song in my life. But in 1984, Tina Turner recorded one of the, the top 500 songs of all time, according to Rolling Stone magazine. Some of you know what that song is. Some of you maybe are singing it in your mind. Uh, you don't want me to sing it but she, she sang this song, What's Love Got to Do With It? Got to do with it, right? Well, when it comes to the Christian life, when it comes to, to us living out our faith, when it comes to us being a disciple of Jesus Christ, love has everything to do with it. Love has everything to do with you and me being a disciple of Jesus Christ. It has everything to do with it. Vir the virtue of love is the bedrock of our Christian faith. It, it sits at the very foundation, very core of our Christian faith and of our lives. In just a minute, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. But, but why, why do we believe that? Why do I believe that love is the foundation of, of who we are and it's, it's the, the foundational virtue, it is the, the chief virtue that all of us should have, should exude, should live out? Well, he, here's the reason. I'm going to read a few passages of Scripture that, that I think will help us just be sold out on this idea. John 3.16, many of you have know this verse you, you know it by heart might be a little bit different here in the new living translation but it, it's said a little bit different it says for this is how god loved the world this is how god loved the world he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him would not perish but have eternal life it, it is it is god who loved us first it wasn't that God loved us, or it wasn't that we, we expressed our love for God and then because we loved him, God loved us. No, we're told very clearly that God loved us first, even while we were yet sinners, even while we were enemies of the cross. God chose to love us, even I don't know some of your stories. I don't know some of your testimonies. Maybe for some of you, it took a long time 
before you finally realized and understood and, and could grasp and get your mind around what God did for you through the person of Jesus Christ. Maybe for some, you, you lived your life a long time running from him, making choices contrary to what God would want for you. Maybe some of you are, were kind of like me and just kind of coasted through a lot of years of my life and didn't sell out and didn't be all in for Jesus. Even while you were in that state, even while you were running from him, rebelling from him, choosing everything but him, God still loved you and God was still pursuing you because he loved you first. Verse John 3, 1 says, See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. I don't know that I, I could ever fully understand or comprehend what unconditional love is. I, I hope to, to learn and continue to grow in that and be able to love like that in an unconditional way but I'm, I'm, I'm human and I fail and I fall and sometimes um, because of people's actions and I, it's hard sometimes for me to love in an unconditional way like, like God does. His love is so amazing and so incredible. 1 John 4, 7, 8, and 9 says this. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. God loved us first. God loves us unconditionally. His, his love never fails. But when we think about love, we think about what love truly is, I think these passages of scripture help kind of paint a picture, help give us a definition of, of what love is. Because for many, the, the idea is, is that love is just something that we feel. That love is a, is a feeling, it's an emotion. It's, I get this kind of tingly feeling and, and that's, that's just, it means I love someone or I love something. And in fact, that's, that's not love at all. Love is not a feeling. Love is not an, an emotion. And, and how, do we, how do we know this? We know this because you cannot command an emotion. I can't command you to feel a certain way. But in the, in the scriptures, God commands us to love. We, we are commanded to, to love, and it's an action. It's something that we do. It's, it's not a feeling. It's not just an emotion. In, in Matthew 22, 36 through 40, there's this interaction between the religious leaders and, and Jesus. And the religious leaders are trying to trip Jesus up. And so they ask him a question. And they say, teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus, what's the most important commandment, Right? I don't know if I were you, I, I think I might answer that differently. I might say something different like, well, hey, they're all equally good. Just follow all of them. But Jesus, uh, being Jesus, he replies and he answers their question. He says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. So Jesus takes all of, of the law, all the law of Moses, all of the, the law from the, the prophets, takes all of that, all of the, the tradition, the written, the oral law, all of that that, 
that these religious leaders had been following and had been passed down from generation to generation. And he boils it down to two things, but sort of one thing. He boils it down to love. Boils it down to loving God and loving others. If we could just get that right, if we could just figure that out, if we could just figure out how to, how to love God with everything, with all that we have, and then as a result of that, we figure out how to love our fellow man, love our brothers and sisters, man, this world would be such a different place. And so incredibly, Jesus boils it all down to this. Love is that important. Love is, is that critical. And of all these virtues that we're going to talk about over these next eight weeks, nine weeks, love is the chief. More than joy, more than peace, more than patience, more than kindness, more than goodness, more than faithfulness, more than um, self-control, love. There's a reason that, that he begins with love. Because no matter what we do, no matter how big and amazing and great it is that we may do, if we do not love, it means nothing. No matter what we give, we can be the most generous person in the world. We can give thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. We can give millions of dollars. But it amounts to nothing if we do not love. No matter how much knowledge and wisdom and understanding, we can, we can read all the books we can have all the, the wisdom and understanding, be able to answer all the questions. We can, be, we can be the grand champion of jeopardy. But if we don't love, it means nothing. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3 says, If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans, could you, ama could you imagine how amazing, how incredible that would be? That if you understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and, and, and if you had such faith that could move mountains, if you possessed all of that, if you could do all of that, if, if you were all of that, but you did not love others, you would be nothing. Verse three, if I gave everything I have to the poor, I mean, how amazing would that be if you give everything, your, your, your finances, your possessions, you even sacrifice your own body. You do all of that. You, you could boast about all of that, verse three says, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. 1 John 3, 16 through 19 says we know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in, that be in that person? Imagine, right? Imagine, you know, you're, you, you're, you're stable, you're fine, you know, you've, you've got money in the bank, you're doing well, you got food at home, you got shelter, you, you know, the car's running fine, you got, you're, you're doing fine. And you see someone in need. And you think to yourself, man, I really love that person. Boy, I really hope, I really hope for the best for them. I really hope things work out for them. And you just go on your way. How loving is that? But I believe we're called to do something about it. Verse 18, dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. 
Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we will be confident when we stand before God. If we see the need, and we can meet the need, then I believe we're called to meet the need. We get wrapped up in a lot of thinking, and a lot of excuses, and a lot of what ifs. And I believe we're called to do something about it. If we're followers of Jesus, if we have the Holy Spirit in us, we're called to love. We are commanded to not just love God, but also to love one another. And it's not just a thought in our mind. It's not just a feeling that we have. It is something that we do. The predominant Greek word in the New Testament for love is agape. It's, it's, it's a, agape love. One commentator wrote in, in trying to describe agape love, he wrote this. It means that no matter what people may do to us by way of insult or injury or humiliation, we will never seek anything else but their highest good. No matter what they do to us, via insult, via injury, via humiliation, we seek nothing but the highest good for them. It describes a deliberate effort never to seek anything but the best, even for those who seek the worst for us. I don't know about you, but that is hard. It is, it is not easy. I don't stand here this morning saying, well, it's just what you ought to do. You just do that, right? You just love people that don't treat you well. You, you just love people that, that take advantage of you. You, you just do it. I think it's part of this process. It's part of this growing and maturing in our faith. It's just part of this, this gardening thing that happens. Again, as we are tending to our soul, as we are spending time with God, as we are staying connected to the vine, the Holy Spirit produces this fruit in us. And it's called love. And it's not a feeling. It's, it's not just this tingly sensation that we get. It is, it is an action. Love is something we do. See, I believe that God requires a certain kind of love in the life of believers. And, and there's three ways I think that, that I describe it. And the first one is this. It's on the screen, I believe. Is that love acts. Love does something. Love takes action. Love, love doesn't just sit at home and think cozy thoughts. Love doesn't just sit at home and say, man, I, I really wish them well. I really hope somebody does something to help them out. I really hope someone loves them in, in a way that could meet their needs. That's, that's not love. That's not the love that God requires from us as followers of Jesus. We are called to act. We are called to do something. If we have means, then we should do something about it. We should love our fellow brothers and sisters. Love doesn't just act, though. Because, again, sometimes I think we have all these conversations in our head. It's like, well, I, I, can't, I can't give in that way. I, I, I can't. Um, I can't act and I, I can't meet that need like this. But I also believe that the scriptures teach us that love sacrifices. Love sacrifices. It, it's, it's exactly the love that God expressed to you and to me through the person of Jesus Christ. He acted on our behalf and he sacrificed he gave his best gift. He gave his one and only son. And he sacrificed so that we might have the opportunity to experience new life, to experience freedom, to experience a, a new relationship 
through the person of Jesus Christ. So God not only acted, we should act. God not only sacrificed and loved, we too should sacrifice as well. And thirdly is love gives. Love gives. God gave his best gift, his perfect gift. God continues to give and give amazing gifts to you and me. He continues to pour out blessing upon blessing. We, we can never outgive God, no matter hard, how hard we try. We could never outgive him. And this is the way that God loved and loves you and me. And it's his example that we too should love in a way like this. Not a feeling, not an emotion, but we act. We do something. We sacrifice. We give. Love is a daily choice. Love is a choice that we make each and every day. We get up in the morning. We have the opportunity to choose love or we have an opportunity to choose contrary. We have an op opportunity to, to choose differently, to not live in this love that we have so generously seen through the life of Jesus Christ. But love is a daily choice. It is not easy. It's not easy to take action because what happens that means we probably have to change our plans. We have to do something different than maybe what we were going to do. It means we have to sometimes sacrifice some time that we wanted, that we were planning something different, or maybe some resources that we had planned for something else. We, we have to sacrifice. And sometimes it's just not fun to give. It's, sometimes it's more fun to receive, right? Gimme, 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 get, get, get. We're called to, to give. It's not, it's not easy. But it's what we're called. It's what we're called to be. It's what we're called to do. In, in the scriptures, um, there's, there's, a, there's an analogy, an illustration. There, there's a... God uses a marriage relationship to explain the relationship that, that we have with him. I think it's the best way that I can practically explain what love does or what love is. My marriage isn't perfect. Somebody chuckle. <laughs> It's not, it's, it's not perfect. My wife and I don't have a perfect relationship. We, we don't. We don't always get along. Sometimes we argue and don't see eye to eye on things. But we choose to love. We choose each day to love each other and some days it looks better than others and some days it doesn't look all that good but we choose to love each other I don't deserve it she does but I don't I'm not a perfect husband I know you're all stunned you're shocked right My wife chooses daily to love me. And what does that look like? Now let me be clear. I'm not, I'm not being sexist. I'm not, I'm not trying to define roles for women. But I'm just saying in my home, I recognize some of the ways that my wife loves me. And it's not a feeling, it's not an emotion, right? We've been married too long to have that tingly love thing, right? No, I'm just kidding. 
but she chooses daily to love me by doing simple things. She, she loves to, to make meals for our family. She loves to feed us, maybe sometimes too well, maybe, maybe that's a problem, but I don't think she always enjoys cooking. I think she'd probably appreciate it if I did it. I'd say more, but I don't know that I hardly ever do it, so I probably shouldn't say that. Every day, not every day, but quite often, there's this basket in our closet, and it's got stuff in it that sometimes stinks and doesn't smell all that good. And you know what my wife does? She does laundry. And again, I'm not being sexist here. I'm not saying that's the role of a woman. But that's what my wife, it's it's one of the ways that she loves me and loves our family. She daily chooses to love. Do, Do I think that she enjoys doing laundry? I don't. I don't think she likes it at all. But you know why I think she does it? Not because I think she thinks it's her role, but I think she does it because she loves me and she loves our family. And so she chooses daily to love in practical ways like that. It's not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm not the easiest person in the world to live with or to love. But she chooses love each and every day. And she acts. She does something about it. Even when we don't get along sometimes, even when we're arguing and fighting and bickering, she still chooses to love. I still choose to love her. We're called to love one another. We're called to to love God. And that love looks like action, doing something. It's sacrificing for one another. It's called giving of yourself and thinking of others before you think of yourself. We need we need more love in this world today. And I, I, I wish I could say, I wish I could say that when I look at social media or, or I, I watch the news or I, I wish that I could say that, that, that everything that I see that's, that's wrong and evil and bad is, is all happening outside the church and it's all happening from those who don't follow Jesus. But I think that we need more love in the lives of disciples. We need more love expressing itself in our lives, in the church. Like I don't expect people who don't know Jesus to love well, but you know what? A lot of them do. A lot of people do love well. Some love better than Christians love. We as followers of Jesus who have the Holy Spirit in us, who, who is producing in us the virtue of love, we need, we need to up our game. We need to love well. We need to love the way that God requires us to love. We need to act. We need to sacrifice. And we need to give. Father in heaven, thank you for your example of love. Thank you for how you revealed how we should love in that you gave, you you sacrificed, you acted on our behalf, not because we deserved it, but because you loved us 
and you continue to love us in an unconditional way. I pray that that love, it would compel us, it would transform us, it would permeate our lives in such a way that we would understand and we would grasp how amazing your love is. And then that we would love you back in return the best that we can, that we would love you through action, through sacrifice, through giving, and that we would be able to love one another, that we would love our brothers and sisters, those who don't look like us, who don't act like us, who don't talk like us, who, who are different than us, that we would love the way that you require that we love, that we would act, that we would sacrifice, that we would give. And I believe if we would do that, if we would live in that way, that we would change and transform this world. Help us. Help us to, to allow the Holy Spirit to produce in us this agape love that chooses the best for others, no matter what they may choose for us. Help us to love the way that you require us to love. Help us to grow in that. Teach us, lead us, guide us through the power of your Holy Spirit. For we pray all of these things and we ask in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Well, this morning, um, as we have for the last several weeks now that we have been back at church, uh, we, we no longer call the ushers forward. We no longer pass plates uh, through uh, the aisles. And if you noticed on your way in, there's a, a black box by the double doors back here. There's a black box over here on this side as well. Uh, those are simply offering boxes. If you, if you brought an offering today and you're wondering, hey, what do I do with that? Where do I put it? If we're not gonna pass plates around, we just ask that you put those in the black boxes and then we will take care of it uh, from there. Uh, if you're still watching online um, and you choose to give online, uh, we appreciate your gift tremendously. Uh, you simply just go to newhopealive.org you click on the menu button, you click give, fill out some information and click submit. Uh, we just thank you so much for how you've continued to give through this, uh, this time, these times of uncertainty, uh, whether it's with employment or health and all of those things. Uh, you have been so, uh, so generous over these last several months. So thank you. Uh, a couple other announcements. Uh, if, if you're not on social media, if you have not, seen the email yet um, next week will be our last Saturday evening service uh, so if any of you have kind of been following the schedule and maybe some of you have been to a Saturday service uh, next week so June 27th that will be our last Saturday evening uh, service so beginning July 5th we will have a service on Sunday morning at 9 a.m and a service on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. and just those two services moving forward. We believe that the, the church is never more healthy than its staff or it's never more healthy than its volunteers. And hopefully as we continue to see progress being made and things opening up more and more, uh, that we can begin to do the same things as well. And hopefully soon, uh, sooner than later, we'll be able to offer some children's ministry and children's classes and some of those things and know that those things take volunteers, uh, and take people who are willing to give of themselves. And so trying to manage all of that and figure those things out and not exhaust resources and, um, and volunteers, uh, we just want to do the best we can at caring uh, for people. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you for um, over these, you know, last few months of figuring out schedules and changing things and all of that. Uh, just appreciate your consideration through all of that. Uh, we just continue to evaluate things as seems like there's more and more information that continues to come out. Uh, but we will try to keep you informed the best that we can 
via uh, Facebook Live videos, via email, uh, via the website. So if you would, just kind of keep close to, to those outlets, and uh, we will communicate those things the best that we can to you. Thank you so much for being here this morning. It's been good uh, to gather together with you. If you would, uh, Pastor Heath is over here uh, to my left, your right.